It might help if I turn the microphone on. No. Thanks everybody for <laughs> for joining us here in the Comics Corner. I'm Mike here with Johnny. I just said the funniest thing I'll ever exactly, say yeah, yeah. in my entire life and it was supposed to be on camera. It's okay, I heard it, so that's... Mike internally just laughed harder than you even knew was humanly possible uh -huh. and you all missed out on it because somebody didn't click the microphone button. Well, you're not missing out on some good times here because uh, today it is our Tuesday show, so that means that we are doing uh, talking news, talking new releases, and then also uh, pulling more from the Pastimes pull box. Uh, as always, we've been adding adding more bundles to there, more and more by the day. Um, yeah, literally, that's what I do. I'm just Bundle Boy. That's my superpower. Oh, Bundle I'm Boy, Johnny! Yeah. Like, Go to work, Bundle Boy, and I'm like, yes, and, and then I just fill. Grabs the, the first five comics that he sees and slaps them in a in a bag. Five uh, bucks. <laughs> exactly. Ten bucks. No. Yeah, I actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks everybody for coming out. Um. Yeah, so I guess uh, getting into it first, uh, news, uh, you know, as always, there's still the, the big uh, breakup between Diamond and DC. Um, there have been some changes uh, recently, uh, including they did kind of walk back some of their, some of their restrictions. Uh, it was at first um, basically, you know, cut cold turkey, end of the month would be kind of where the, we see the last FOC ones. Um, we put in the last, last week's FOC, or I guess this week's FOC, um, we had to do with a different distributor because Diamond no longer had any DC books on there. So basically the last few books that we had ordered through Diamond will be showing up for the, through the end of the month. Um, but basically next month we'll be featuring uh, books from a new distributor. We're getting ours from Lunar. So, um, you know, that's something to keep in mind. But, but yeah, at first Diamond cut off cold turkey also with uh, the European markets. There was a lot of questions when all this happened it would be, Hey, you know, I have a you know comic book store out in Ireland or the UK. How do I get books? Um, because Diamond has distribution centers there that make it a lot cheaper for them to get books uh, sent out there. But you know, Lunar and uh, what is it? UCS, UCB. Oh yeah, that's like the other name. It's DCBS Discount yeah, Comic yeah. Book Services. But then you said they have another name. It's U like UCS or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's three letters starting with a U. Um, but you know, they don't have the infrastructure right now to be able to provide the same discount. So in the meantime, Diamond, uh, DC kind of walked it back and, and renegotiated a little bit with Diamond. So uh, overseas stores would be able to get books, I believe, through the end of the year, whereas we were just kind of, you know, end of the month. Um, but, you know, it's still kind of causing a, a huge rip. There's still stores that are, you know, they've taken the stance of, you know, no DC. Um, fortunately, we've, we've got it set up. We will have DC books. Um, you know, we'll see how the new, the new system works. Uh, you know, in a perfect world, Marvel would just buy Batman, so I don't have a conflict of interest, because right now I have a conflict of interest. Uh -huh. I hate DC, but I'm still going to buy Batman. But luckily, um, from here on out, there's literally only going to be like three or four more Batman trades that come out that are going to complete the run that I'm looking to complete. So after that, I can legitimately say like, no more DC. Mm -hmm. but Cut them off. Batman's a pretty big deal. Yeah. I can't uh, deny that. And you know, that's the unfortunate thing to me is like, you're putting, like, I, I hate to say this, but like, it'd be one thing if like a few image titles, and I'm not trying to like downplay them, but like, if those went away, but like, you're talking comic book stores that don't want Batman or Superman yeah. or Wonder Woman on their shelves. What's up? Like, DC. Yeah. You've misstepped here. Kind of, yeah, poisoning like, the market. that's not a good yeah. thing. And that's like, it, as a consumer, it makes me sad. And as somebody on the other side of it, it makes me, like, question their business practice. Yeah. Um, real quick, shout out to Raidami in the chat. What's up, man? Thanks for joining us. Um, I know you're usually in for Pokemon, but glad you're stopping by for some uh, comic book stuff, too. Well, who's your favorite Pokemon? But it has to be from the first 151. Ex exactly, yeah, yeah. First, exists. first... Uh, yeah, base set, favorite Pokemon, and also favorite superhero. Let's Who's see yours? if we could... Favorite Pokemon? Yeah. Uh, of the 150, uh, I think it was definitely Haunter. Um, 
Oh. I feel like Gengar gets a lot of love. Um, like I feel like Ghastly and Gengar get the most love of that kind of evolution. But Haunter is that's that's the right choice. That's where you want to be. Um, I like those purple cards too. They're purple ones. They're psychic. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, my favorite starter Pokemon for that set was also uh, Squirtle to Blastoise. So. Oh, cool. Nice. Good answer. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite comic? Uh, Doctor Strange, I think. Doctor Strange has got to be it. He's he's a wizard. Cool. Can't go wrong with that. Just like Harry Potter. Okay. Uh, oh, here we go. Right now, me. Uh, favorite uh, Pokemon is Eevee, and then favorite uh, mm. comic book character is Shazam. Both good choices. Both good choices. But a, D- a DC choices. fan, though. That's okay. Least of that, yeah. see, um, you in the chat. I'm sorry, what was the name? Raidami. Raidami? R- yeah, Raidami. Raidami, did you see the Shazam movie? It was excellent. Mike, did you see the Shazam movie? Uh, it was also excellent. <laughs> Still. Exactly. Even when I saw it, it was excellent. No, I, I actually did not see it. Um, that was one of the ones that kind of, yeah, I know, it kind of got away from me. Um, uh, I wasn't really watching that many movies at that point. Um, but, you know, I hear good stuff. Um, you know, they definitely took, you know, the light, more lighthearted approach for that one, which is definitely what DC kind of needed. Um, you know, it's DC, at least in the, the movie universe, it's usually a lot of, like, grim, dark, and, you know, very heavy stuff. But what's wrong with that? And I'm not, like, here's, but, this could be a good like, yeah. talk. Like, I... I like that. I just don't think I don't think DC executes it as well as it could, and that's why, like Batman Begins and Dark Knight are dark as hell, and they're fantastic. Yeah, I don't think that there's anything definitely inherently wrong with it. Real quick, uh, right on me says, yeah, he liked the movie. Uh, it was uh, top ten for him. So hell yeah, very very much like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like top ten movies or top ten superhero movies. I think maybe just top ten overall. Just top ten, which top is good. 10 yeah, exactly. Yeah, just ekes, ekes out over uh, uh, Citizen, married, Citizen Kane. Making a million dollars watching Shazam the first time. Exactly. Yeah, it's right up the there. List. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with DC taking the darker tone. Uh, I feel like the problem came out with. Um, I feel like the main one was uh, Suicide Squad versus um, Guardians of the Galaxy because both those I believe came out around similar times or at least. Guardians came out first, and when you know people like that, I feel like rekindled a lot of people's interest in the uh, the Marvel movies. I feel like by then it was kind of turning, starting to, to wane a bit. Um, but here's this, you know, like you know, crazy group of characters that we didn't really know. Um, you know, huge soundtrack um, and just a lot of fun. Uh, very colorful too. Um, yeah. And that kind of you know was uh, blew up in the box office and you know, like got a lot of uh, interest in it. Um, and then Suicide Squad was kind of still in production by then, or maybe even like kind of like getting into post production. But then when they saw that happened, uh, they kind of reworked a lot of the scenes. They made Suicide Squad seem like a lot more of a fun going movie. I think they kind of like pushed Harley Quinn to the front because she was kind of almost like the Deadpool of that universe. Of she could kind of get away with more shenanigans and make it, you know sillier and more colorful. Uh, so I feel like that was one of the early divides of DC trying to like pull back from like the hey we've got like the dark universe because you know. Batman, what was it? I feel like we talked about it, the Frank Miller quote of Batman doesn't laugh or Batman doesn't smile. Um, you know, like he's, he's you know, that doesn't really fit his his aesthetic. So right. it's it's interesting that they had to, um, you know, kind of reel it back. Um, here we go. Right now he says, I think DC is more for 16 and older uh, and Avengers is kind of more for 15 and under. Um, I could definitely see that. Like Marvel definitely does kind of play a bit. I mean, obviously being uh, part of Disney, I feel like they kind of, you know, try to appeal to not only all audiences, but kind of lean a little bit younger. Um, you know, if you want to be cynical about it, you know, hey, for, you know, like toy sales and stuff like that. But also, you know, like, I feel like, you know, they want to make movies for the whole family. Whereas DC, I think, was kind of pushing older. Um, maybe they thought that their fans might be older and, you know, just trying to, you know, again, maybe stand out from Marvel more. So, you know, by having these kind of darker narratives and characters, um, they would stand out a little bit more, but then at the end of the day, they did try to, you know, then just mimic what Marvel had, so. I don't know, man. I personally think Infinity War and Endgame are both actually pretty dark. Yeah, There's yeah, that's, that's true. There's a lot of death that stands that doesn't re- get reversed. There's a lot of uh, powerful moments that were very adult-like. Do you know what, actually, I'm not embarrassed about this. You know what? Was the fir- I cried three times the first time I saw Endgame, mm-hmm. and the first thing that made me cry was when um, Scott Lang, uh, I can't the actor's name, Paul Rudd, when Paul exactly. Rudd, Scott Lang, when he comes back and he like, he looks on that, he finds that monument, yeah, the dead yeah, people exactly, thing, yeah. and then he goes to his daughter's house and they like hug and she's like older, yeah. I cried. Yeah. Like, that's not, I'm not disagreeing with your opinion that it's 1400, but like that scene and like that, those kind of emotions were not, and that's where Marvel, I think, really hits home 
you know, almost like an old Simpsons episode where there's like, yeah, there's the funny and there's the fun. Yeah. But what made it really good was there was that touching moment. And yeah. Marvel has that, and DC doesn't. But just because a movie's dark doesn't mean you can't have that. They just don't have good execution. Yeah, yeah, they don't really build up to it in the same. Because I think that's part of it too is is the build up of like you know like if your movie is normally usually pretty fun, colorful, and you know like uh, you know just a lot more family oriented and then well, yeah when you kind of slip in moments like that it's you don't really expect it and definitely hits harder and you know also marvel definitely has the benefit to um ant-man not as much because he only, only had i think two movies before then um you know they had like the 10-year benefit of like yeah. hey here's a bunch of characters that you know like we knew and you know like you know loved or liked and then you know like especially when characters either died or you know like had kind of uh, uh you know character moments like that that you know we got to see them in a different light. It definitely hits harder, is because you know, like we've we've had that build up. Whereas DC, not as much. Um, like, I know they were trying to have their moment like that with uh, Justice League kind of being their first Avengers. So we had like the Aquaman movie, the Wonder Man movie, uh, Wonder Woman movies, um, and you know, a whole host of Batman movies. But we don't really know those characters. So like, you know, in the Justice League movies, you know, stuff that involves the Flash or, or Cyborg to some degree, it doesn't really you know have the same impact because. They're all relatively new, and we don't really, you know, have that much of a connection to them. I uh, agree, hundred percent. Speaking of agreement, uh, right now he says, "Yeah, I totally agree with you, Johnny." So Everybody you got does. you got a fan exactly. They always do. They come to Johnny's side. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, you said you mentioned this movie a few minutes ago. Um, this weekend, I watched Deadpool. It was on FXM, which I guess is FX Movies. And yeah, it was totally yeah. uncut, which I was shocked. Yeah, um, that's a good movie, man. But you know what I think is funny? I had forgotten this about it. Okay. You know, before the movie came out, they had that leaked screen test footage, and it's basically the whole yeah, like, highway yeah. scene that opens the movie. Yeah. That is the only action scene in the movie before the final. Yeah, movie. I was gonna say. I know that. Yeah, there's the the Which end stuff. Which is fine because yeah. it was low budget. But yeah, I was, I was like, gonna say. Like the fact that you can make a movie that good with that limited of a budget and that little action to where literally half the action was already shown to the audience previously. Yeah. And it still is really good. And I think I was actually noticing this, that end battle is actually really detailed and good. So I think they did put a lot of work into it, but I was just an interesting note that like, there's really not much more to it. Yeah. Than that. And, and Deadpool. Yeah. Like never really a character known for, for the action. Um, Right, I'm mean, real quick. Right, I'm mean, sorry, love to stay, but I got to go do something. Have a good day. Yeah, you too, right? I mean, as always, thanks for coming on by. No, and... you should be staying. <laughs> exactly. I wish yeah. you no good day. No, you have a good day. Yeah, okay. um, and I'm sure I'm sure we'll see you again uh, on yeah. Monday for for the Pokemon Poke Packs with uh, with Pokemon Royce and and me just kind of off camera showing code cards to people. Why so. didn't they just call him Pokachu? Thanks everybody for coming. Uh no, Pokachu. <laughs> I, that's the. <laughs> I don't know. I just popped into my this head is, as you said that. This is why we stick to we stick to comics. We're not good when we're yeah, talking about anything why, else. Yeah, because if I asked that question to Royce, she would give me the real answer of to why I'm an idiot. I, I think, I think, yeah, exactly. I was going to say, Royce would definitely give you a look and just stare at you like you are. Um, I'm cool with that. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, Deadpool definitely doesn't need the benefit of action for that. And like you kind of alluded to, too, uh, Deadpool, like, had a very small budget. Because um, was that Sony or... Was that still Marvel Studios? It was Fox. I forget. Yeah, that's right. It was Fox. So, so Fox wasn't pumping out um, the same kind of budget, the same backing. Um, this is also at a time where they didn't have the the X Men rights either. So, the only one, like I think the only X Men that they could get were Colossus and then uh, the, the teenage nuclear. Next side boy. There we go. Yeah. It was awesome. So, um, but, um, the. I think that that one came out before Logan, and I think yes. the part of the reason they had such a small budget was because it was they were taking a chance with the rated R movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's... And, but that because it did so well, I mean, I think they got a much bigger budget for the second one. Yeah, I have yeah. To, I've only seen that one once. I got to go back and rewatch it. I, I've only seen the first one. Uh, it was either in, yeah, I think it was in theaters, um, and two I never saw. I, I side note, I'm not really that big on Deadpool. Oh, I'm not I don't, either, I don't actually. find him funny in the comics or the yeah, movies that much. Um, like, Speaking like, of which, we have a uh, bundle over here that might interest you. As, oh, exactly. Yeah, let's 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 drag on Deadpool real quick and then try to sell you Deadpool comics. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you got one real quick, feel free to take a look. Oh, you want it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah if, if you got it right there. Yeah, I do. I've got them all nice and labeled. Um, actually. Oh, there it is, just oh. right at the top. I, don't, have, don't have to go digging that far. No, we have a Deadpool variety sampler uh, with ten comics for ten bucks. So like, there's a couple issues of different um, Deadpool series. And, like, 
I definitely threw this one in here because I thought the cover was totally badass. Yeah, yeah. It's got like a really cool theme on there. Cannonball, Warpath, Domino, Cable. Cable. Um, Lady? Other chick, yeah. Deadpool. And then the other one that put on the other cover is Deadpool and uh, Daredevil, man. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, but then there's, you know, eight issues in between that you're like, what am I getting? They have Deadpool, so. In fact, yeah, he's probably, he's probably going to talk about Shuros. He's probably going to, you know, mouth off to people. He yeah, might die in a few episodes or a few issues, too, so. Yeah, he has the tendency to do that. Uh-huh. And then we also have, um, what? Over the water. Oh, so, speaking of Deadpool. Yeah, um, don't worry. Exactly, yeah. It's a Exactly, yeah, dude, back. yep. Um, but this is a bundle that has um, 12 or 13 issues. It's the entire... Asterisk, I'll explain that in a second. It's the entire Rob Liefeld um, New Mutants run. So it starts at issue 86 um, and goes through issue 100, which is the final issue of the series, and then transitions into X Force. So it starts at 86. So 86 is included. 87 here, which is the first cable, but this is a second printing. Mm-hmm. This is not the first print. The first printing has a red background. Yeah, and not gold. gold. Yeah. So it's not worth like that. Um, and we are missing 88. But it's not a key issue, we just didn't have it. Um, it's probably like a 2 or $3 comic you can get on eBay. Yeah. But that one's not included, but it's 86, 87, 89 through 100, and then 98's the facsimile. So yeah. 98 and 87 are the facsimile, but the rest are legit. Mm-hmm. And I really want 15 bucks for this, so it's like, yeah, 13 issues for 15 bucks. Um, first appearance of Deadpool, first appearance of Cable, entire, I said like Cable, like, like Deadpool, but Cable. Then cable. cable, yeah. Cable. And like the entire Rob Liefeld run, which like this is right before he went insane. Liefeld or uh Yes or, okay, I thought you meant Deadpool. He was always insane. Well no, no I mean like Rob... the thing is, is is Deadpool used to he he played it straight. Like this is during the time where yeah. like he was this more of like cool when when he was kinda of like a death stroke uh knockoff. Yeah. Like he was more, yeah, like just kind of a mercenary that would in the same way that I feel like I don't know. I don't know too much about Spider-Man, but from the stuff that I've read about Spider-Man, like, Spider-Man nowadays, they do make him a lot sillier. Um, yeah. Whereas, like, back then, you know, he would quip, and, you know, he would have, you know, a few one-liners here and there, and, you know, like, just, you know, some banter with uh, villains or people like, but uh, I feel like Deadpool definitely had the same thing of, like, you know, occasionally he would, you know, like, drop a, a you know, a quip here and there, but then, you know, uh, what was it, Daniel Way, which is yeah. where he definitely took more of the turn of, you know, fourth wall breaking and then a lot of these stuff that, you know, and, you know, like, if they made a movie about uh, Deadpool in the Liefeld era, it would have been a lot different. <laughs> so I agree. And, uh, yeah, so Deadpool appears in 98. I think he's in 99 and 100. Um, but then, like I said, transitions to X-Force. But he's also in two miniseries. He has two four-issue miniseries. One is called The Circle Chase. And one just might be Deadpool 1 through 4. I'm not sure about that. I, but I think so. And I then... think even in those, he's still, like, the Merc. Like yeah, more yeah. the mercenary than he is like the root ball. I, yeah, because that Daniel Way run comes after all that. Yeah. So, if you were interested in a more serious Deadpool, like this is a cool way to find out about his origins. So. Yeah. Um, but that's a really good point that he wasn't always. Yeah, like, yeah. What he became. Maybe maybe I'm boring and I'm lame, and that's that's why I like <laughs> back no, when he's a lot. No, he's overrated. I don't mince words. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. Me trying to be diplomatic about it, but it's like, nope. It was <laughs> Ryan Reynolds plays him perfectly, and yeah, I yeah, like, like what he does. Oh, yeah, I like, like the character that he plays. That's the thing, is, yeah, I, I totally like, especially, <laughs> what's wrong with the old mutants, Mike, says Charlie in the chat. Thanks again for just stopping by, Charlie. Um, yeah, like, I, I totally agree that, like, Ryan Reynolds, definitely, like, the character that he's playing and the way in which he plays Deadpool, it's like, to a T, you know, like, I, I definitely appreciate and get that. Yeah. It's just not for me, but, um, I agree. but yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's right. Yeah, that pull in a couple bundles you can buy. Cool, good transition. So. Uh huh. Exactly okay. seamless. Um, what else is going on in the world of comics, though? Uh, the new one this week was uh, Dark Knight Metal Death oh, Metal yeah. number one uh, of a six-part series. Um, that one is definitely kind of uh, as far as the DC stuff goes, a a you know, a well-anticipated one after the you know all the great stuff that came out. Uh, Dark Knight's Metal, the original one, uh, you know, whether it's characters or just the storylines, I mean, like, you know, I feel like the Batman who laughs is definitely here to stay, it seems, um, but, but yeah, like, this one seems like it's gonna be pretty neat, too, uh, we got a bunch of the number one issues, we got the 1 in 25 variant, too, um, we 
got two of those. Uh, so we've definitely got uh, that going. Uh, this week was just all DC. Um, again, we're back to the we're back to the part where it's uh, Marvel on and off weeks of here's comic books one week, and then here are trade paperbacks and um, hardcovers or omnibuses. You know, if you happen to get those, which is a hardcover. Exactly. Yeah. Cover. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, specifically, you know, if you wanted like a Silver Surfer one, you know, they're out there, um, but <laughs> not anymore. They're gone. Uh, some, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Some places. Luckily, I work at a comic store that can pre-order. Uh huh. They're in the pre-order. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, let us know if you always want to pre-order stuff. Because yeah, like it's that's the thing, choice. especially with certain hardcovers, like uh, collectors editions or omnibuses. Yeah, like the second they're on sale, like uh, outside of just the pre-orders, they they go pretty quick. Thirty-two minutes today. Yeah, that's that's wild. Yeah, I don't know how many that place had in stock, but to sell out of anything in 32 minutes. Yeah. I mean, that's like... I think comic related, especially these days, yeah. That's like when, like, both sick I was going to say, like, that's, or, like, you know, concerts that, you know, yeah. they, they go online I mean, and then, that's yeah. that's crazy, dude. Um, so, pre-ordering, big, and I think we've talked about this, but, like, for anybody that really cares, like, if you pre-order stuff, those are the number, those are the numbers Marvel work, looks at. Yeah. And they work off of those. And they will, will produce more if there's more pre-orders. And if there's more pre-orders, there's going to be more in general, which means that there's less of a chance that they go out of print soon, less of a chance of people scalping them for huge bucks, yeah. less of a chance of you missing out on them. And if they continuously see increases in their pre-orders, it's going to become normal for them to put out bigger uh, productions yeah. of these. Yeah, I mean, you so, know, in the same way like that we do our ordering based off of that, you know, like the only way that we could kind of judge... Uh, where we should be ordering, you know, our numbers at it's it's the pre-orders, you know, because right. um, yeah, it's like I, when a new issue of something. or Okay, I think a good example is whatever that first appearance of that new character in Batman was a few yeah, issues punchline. ago. Yeah, punchline. Yeah, and, and the designer. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody pre-orders it because they don't know in advance. Mm-hmm. And the night before, you get thirty calls here. Oh, exactly. You copies? No, we don't have thirty copies because nobody pre-ordered it. So exactly. We, yeah. we thought only ten people were getting it. Mm-hmm. But if you know, yeah, that's a chance you take if you're pre-ordering, trying to like, um, what's the, What's the word like? Um, like scope out comics that you're gonna oh oh uh, speculating. Yeah, if you're gonna like try to speculate, like part of that gamble is pre-ordering and always being on a pull list, so yeah. that when it does come, you're not scrapping for it. Exactly. Um, and then plus, if you're just a collector that doesn't want to flip things, being on a pull list and pre-ordering, you're guaranteed something. And then if it turns out to be a first appearance, you got it, and you don't have yeah. to pay stupid prices for it. Exactly. Yeah, I remember. So, I think the the biggest uh, example of this one, though, granted, it's it's kind of like a one in a million thing. Like nobody really saw this coming. Was um, Batman Damned uh, when that yeah. one was first being solicited um, in twenty eighteen? I think it was like late twenty eighteen. Uh, I think at the store, I think I was literally the only one that was on it because I saw like um, they had the Diamond Retail Summit in in Chicago in McCormick Place that spring, and I'd gone to that, and they'd like you know shown some teaser stuff. I'm like, oh, this looks cool. You know, like a mature like line for dc it's batman it's joker it's a lot of cool stuff i'm like sure put me down that's not it's only three issues i'm sure i'll be interested in that regardless uh so you know we put in the initial order for that i probably had you know like it was like 15 or less going off of like batman subscribers nobody really seemed to jump on it so final order uh cutoff came around and i think i might have like knocked down the numbers a little bit more just because i'm like oh, i don't know you know who's gonna be into this you know like, nobody's really responded it's like just me and like maybe one other person um then you know that night before it went out like that tuesday night or whenever uh the article hit about you know batman damned you know having uh you know full frontal male nudity in there uh bruce you know wang, exactly you yeah first the out. first you know first appearance of bruce wang um i mean i knew about it but i didn't know that there was a name for it <laughs> exactly you're welcome the bat wing uh-huh exactly the batter wing um they the, once you know everybody started seeing the articles about that you know we literally had people calling almost every day uh, for the rest of like the next two or three weeks, you know, asking, do we have that issue? Do we have the issue? It's like, well, you know, no, because, you know, obviously in this case, you know, this one was like a one in a million thing, but like nobody really asked to pre-order it. So, you know, like we can't order, you know, a whole lot just on the off chance that, you know, people like end up wanting it. So uh, there's definitely the benefit to, to calling ahead to, you know, like uh, setting up pre-orders, you know, that's what the, the nice thing about previews magazine is you get to see basically like a month to two months in advance what's going to be coming out so you get that you know that paragraph of, of what the story is if it's a new one um if it's ongoing stuff too they'll sometimes sometimes kind of allude to like first appearances or new characters stuff like that not always sometimes like depending on either the storyline or marvel or dc sometimes they try to play that close to their chest um whereas other times you know like they try and you know 
tease the speculative market a little bit by you know saying oh and you know and this might be the first appearance for somebody new or you know uh, a new villain you know comes onto the scene. Um, yeah, I was thinking while we were talking, this occurred to me here while like this was just happening. Um, a really good example, and you can attest to this, which is why it's a great example um, of it going the other way, is the House of X powers of X. Okay. Yeah. And nobody knew, or nobody thought it was going to be the hit that it was, and so the first two issues of House of X and at least the first two issues of Powers of X, mm -hmm. you know, those final cutoff dates, like he was just saying, were like a month ahead of, yeah. you know, three, four, and five. Those issues one and two, first printings of those are like super hard to find and were yeah. sold out within a week. But see, what happened then was everybody by the third week was yeah. on board and wanted to be on pull lists and the FOCs for the next issues weren't done yet. So all of a sudden Marvel knew, oh, we got to pump a bunch, a bunch out. You can... I can walk over there right now and grab like multiple copies of like issues four, five, and six exactly, of each yeah. series. And that's, look, yeah, does it suck that we have a few on the shelf? It kind of does, but like as the consumer, it's better to be able to come into this store today and buy that for cover price than it is to have to track down issue two on eBay for 25 bucks a yeah. month, which is what you have to do. And what changed that? Everybody got on the pull list. Everybody. Mm -hmm. And now there's an over now it's oversaturated which again does that ruin the market for things like expensive if you're a, if you're a flipper and a seller that does saturate your market but if you're a consumer that's that's what you want yeah. man so there and right there's proof in the pudding that pre-orders change the course yeah because what if nobody pre-ordered those then issue three would be 25 bucks issue four would be 20 you know what i mean yeah. it would it'd be all of them so we're lucky it's only the first two or three that's and that's and that's usually how yeah how they do the second printings too is because then when they see that like we're trying to like ping them for like you know yes. back orders on ones that are sold out then they see those numbers and they're like oh okay you know that means that maybe you know we should either do a second print or, or something you know to well, kind some of some of those issues got up to three or four printings like there's a, yeah, there's definitely yeah. a third printing of each first issue. yeah so I was gonna say yeah like I don't know if there's a fourth that might be too deep but there's Marvel Marvel gets third. wild on some of them I know um. Uh, another big series, Absolute Carnage, uh, of last summer. Oh, I know Absolute okay. Carnage number one. I I remember seeing it was either a sixth or seventh printing that uh, <laughs> that they got up to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, that's the thing is, you know, like it may seem like a lot, and you know, like there may be some you know arguments here and there about variant covers and practices with that because the way that Marvel does it is each second each new printing gets a different cover, and okay. some people they want all these different covers too. So you know, it may seem predatory in in that nature, but regardless. The point is, you know, like that when they see that people are still buying the, you know, the second printing and that's basically almost sold out, then they'll move it to a third one and so on and so forth. So, you know, if the interest is there and we know ahead of time, you know, it definitely helps chances of either getting it in time or, you know, showing that there's interest to make a second printing. So, yeah, so there is like a lot of real actual business benefit. Now, if, in my opinion, I think the other end of this is Marvel needs to somehow change their business practice and like keep track of things that sell out more because I've talked mm -hmm. to nauseam on this channel that like some of these omnibuses have been out of print for 10 years and they don't even know and it's like okay who in your business department isn't keeping track of this or taking note of it yeah. or, or tracking it down and like why am I a person who doesn't work for Marvel aware of this and they aren't so, like that's an issue yeah maybe so, maybe I'm cynical but I, I feel like with Marvel they definitely have more vested interest in their their weekly and monthly issues than a lot of the the you know uh trades and and things like that so I feel like they're kind of willing to you know like all right we did a we did a print run of you know this this omnibus you know that's it we'll we'll focus on that another time maybe we'll do a a new printing with a new cover but for right. the most part like I feel like a lot of their focus is on those weeklies and then uh, even more cynically, the variant covers of those Which I don't so. disagree with you, but yeah. I just think that they are underestimating how the market's changed in the last 10 years. Yeah, because yeah. if you have people selling it for two, $300 on eBay when it's a $100 cover price, that means people want it. Yeah, exactly. So I think, yeah, I think when they first started busting omnibuses out, nobody gave a crap. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about this the other day. There's a, we were talking about Rod Liefeld X Force mm -hmm. a minute ago. Okay, there's an omnibus that collects the first, uh, it's like, I don't know, X-Force 1 through 21 or some crap like that. doesn't matter. First, buying X-Force. I literally can picture in my head being at C2E2 like two years ago and seeing them on a table, a pile of them. 
I even remember the store that had it. I don't want to, well, whatever, first aid. No, no free rides. Yeah, well, okay, so <laughs> no. they had a stack, a pile of X-Force omnibuses that were marked down to like 20 or $30 each. Yeah. That book goes for over $100. Today. You can't find it. Twenty, thirty dollars. Yeah. Because three years ago, nobody cared about these books. Oh, oversized omnibus! I don't want it. The yeah. market's changed, and Marvel needs to become more aware. I think they are because of the reprints they're doing now. Yeah, but yeah. Even these re- like we just said it already. This Silver Surfer reprint, it sold out in thirty-two minutes. Today. Yeah, yeah. It's a reprint, dog. <laughs> Bust out another hundred and fifty. Exactly. Yeah. Two hundred, three hundred copies of that. Yeah, I mean, I, and and I think maybe DC is, I mean, you know, they're moving this route for maybe different reasons, but DC is definitely looking to be more focused on, you know, they're kind of getting away from the monthly and weekly issues. Um, DC is definitely focusing more on making trades and making, you know, uh, uh, graphic like original graphic novels, um, especially nowadays since they have their imprint of, gosh, it was uh, inked and Zoom, I think it is. I think Zoom is like the uh, uh, grade school to kind of like, uh, you know, early adolescence books, mm-hmm. whereas uh, Z- uh, inked is more of like their kind of young adult, uh, like teens um, line of, of graphic novels. So they're definitely focusing on that. Um, because, you know, in some ways it's a little bit easier. You know, they just have the graphic novel, they put it out, it sells better at book fairs, um, you know, say what you will about, like, floppies and stuff like that, but, you know, like, it means that they're, there's not the hunting down of, you know, in, like, like we talked about, like, in the, the um, you know, House and Powers of X one, you know, if they don't do second printings on those first issues, you know, if we've got a bunch of issues of, you know, two through six, and you want to get into it, it's like, all right, well, where's issue one? You know, do I just get that online or do I just, you know, am I stuck with it or do I just wait for the trade? It, you know, so focusing on trades definitely takes that that aspect out of it of, all right, well, I just buy this and I've got everything. You know, there's there's not like, and then, you know, there are people who like the hunt of it and, you know, I certainly appreciate that. But I think that that's kind of where DC is looking and, you know, Marvel, I feel like might be kind of focused more on the opposite of, you know, just doing the weeklies. So um... also real quick here, uh, shout out to Babby Yoda said, what's up, guy or hey, guys. Hey there, Babby. How's it going? Another uh, Pokemon person. That's everybody's. Everybody's coming on by from Pokemon yeah, to comics. Chat before. I remember those that's true. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. Yes. Who's your favorite Pokemon? Yeah, Babby Yoda. We had uh, 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 Raidami was on, but they might remember Raidami too, because also you know they're on the same day. But um, mm-hmm. we asked Raidami uh, favorite Pokemon from the original 150, and uh, favorite superhero. So we'll, we'll we'll report back on that. But yeah, sorry, you were saying. Oh, so. One of the things that DC needs to get in their quality control, um, because I'm in different groups on the social medias of like collectors for the collected editions, the biggest, number one biggest complaint about DC is they can't make a cohesive, they can't decide on a cohesive format to release all their stuff. It's a, it's a total mess. Yeah, so that's like true. The way Marvel has the epic collections and what they're doing is those are going to, be the way they release these stories from now on. Mm-hmm. And you're always going to be able to get them in this format, and they're going to look nice on the shelf, they're all going to match. It all makes sense. Mm-hmm. DC, you know, there was like, I'm not a fan of this, but I know that a lot of people complain about it. There was like this Mark Wade Flash run, and we just got the trade paperback volume seven a couple weeks ago, yeah. it finally came out, but like six had come out years ago, yeah, and they just yeah. stopped. So there's that issue, but then also like, they change the logos on their spines. They do that with regularity. They yep. change the design, the omnibuses. Now all the golden age omnibuses are getting new dresses. So if you get like a second printing of Batman one, it doesn't yeah. match the first printing of Batman two. And like for a culture that really cares yeah, yeah. about the way things are and are particular, which is fine, but that is like a known yeah. part of our culture. These collectors, and nitpicky people, mm-hmm. which I'm one of them, don't want a bunch of mismatched spines on their shelf yeah, for one yeah. run of, of something. It doesn't make any sense. Or like, I don't know what line they were talking, but DC, I saw it in the group the other day, they have some release of some series where the first six volumes, let's say, are available in hardcover and trade. Yeah. And now volume seven on is only trade. I was going to say, I think I think that that's like, uh, 
Aquaman. I think that happened with that. I think it was the inverse. Yeah, so it, okay. it was only soft cover trades, and then like now it's only in hard cover, and then yeah, you know, sure. they have stuff vice versa. Where yeah, it's, it's kind of awkward. Of you know, there's people who usually collect one or the other, and if you're eliminating one of them, that makes it awkward for everybody. So. Right. Or like for Batman, there's a trade series they have called uh, um, Dark Knight Detective, and then they have uh, the Cape Crusader, and yeah. they're collecting all the post-crisis Batman. Um, but mixed in there, there's some like little like mini story arcs like death in the family and they're not including that so you have to get the death in the family trade yeah one of the other ones that's not included is batman year two well batman year two has this awesome deluxe edition but that's only available in hardcover yeah so if i want to get the most up-to-date version of that it's got to be a hardcover but then the rest of the set's going to be in trade and it's like what why well, then they do have the, the problem, too, of, like, uh, certain things, like uh, Watchmen getting, you know, a billion reprints then, too, and no love to yeah. other ones, where, like, you know, you can get Watchmen, like, hardcover, softcover, annotated, uh, the noir version, which is basically just, you know, like, black and white, which, you know, not not for me, but I, I get, you know, but also it does seem, you know, kind of like, you know, trying to, like, you know, get everything out of, you know, yeah. as much as it can. But The one they do that I think is really cool is the Unwrapped, where it's just the pencils, Okay, yeah, 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 stuff like that. That's, like, if you're into, like, artistry or artist editions, like, that's essentially what that is. But, yeah, the noir, it's like you're taking something that wasn't meant to be black and white and putting it that way. Yeah. I, but, and again, at the, you know, if, at the, if each year DC is allowed, just for the sake of argument, you're allowed to make 500 collected editions. That's mm -hmm. your budget. And one of them, they choose to take this redundant story and make it black and white. It's yeah, like, oh, that is kind of a bummer. We didn't get my uh, the Aquaman trade paperback because you needed to release Watchmen Noir. That's not even a real thing. Why? <laughs> I just want them to explain it to me because <laughs> Marvel's like, yeah. not over there making these goofy decisions. Yeah, well, they're making other goofy they decisions. They make other goofy yeah. decisions, but their collected editions department's pretty yeah. on point. Yeah, they yeah, like they, they do have a, yeah, like you said, they do have kind of a, a set uh, you know, standard that they go by, whereas DC is kind of more, you know, changes week to week almost. Yeah. No, and then also, you know, now that um, it's, what? I mean, yes. Wait, real quick, those Berserk books, the Dark Horse books. Speaking of black and white. Dude, th those Dark Horse books are like of the best quality. Yeah, yeah. Like that's, They are. That was one of the things that always, that always bummed me when we were talking about like uh, the weekly issues of Marvel. It always kind of bummed me out that, you know, like somehow the number one, uh, comic, you know, company in the world also has kind of the cheapest uh, uh, comic book covers of like it's literally just interior page uh, stock um, to the point where like just holding it like, you know, you'll just see kind of the, the, the ink smudges on your fingers. So, you know, like, you know, even if you're not even holding that long, you know, like if, you, if it's not like, you know, like, you don't have to be like sweating or anything crazy like that. It's just the mere act of holding the comic. You're like, that it's clock is that yeah off. that clock is that clock is ticking. Again, like, nitpicky consumers. Exactly. Yeah. If you don't want fingerprints on a book, you think you want two different spines for your Batman collection? You do not. Um, Either. But yeah, so so it always bummed me out that you know like Marvel was in some ways it felt like kind of cutting corners in that way. But then you know like cut to uh, Dark Horse and you know like uh, you know they definitely care about it. And you know like sure it's you know fifty dollars for basically three uh, three manga issues, but it, the bigger format you know the like. Uh, the the like faux leather uh like binding on it um yeah. the way in which the the book lays uh like flat on a table um which now i can attest to as we've been as we've been reading uh you know berserk number they're one like, like the best book. yeah yeah like it's it's well, it's good paper but they're not too oversized yeah. and they also um dark horse is keeping those evergreen right now which means that like they're gonna stay in print so you might you'll always see a number one yeah it might be a second or third that matters it doesn't matter with collecting mm -hmm. editions but yeah. it does with like single issues but man like they're killing it in that regard oh yeah. this sells well we're not gonna sure yeah print. exactly oh so everyone has accessibility to it at all times that's a good choice and they have that design going forward too of they know how you know books what do we say like one through ten or however many it's it's gonna end up being yeah well and i was gonna say that there there's the series hal singh we were talking about it before we went on the camera yeah. they next month or this month they're starting the Helsing version of those yeah. and they're the same format the same binding they're the red oh, yeah. instead of the black Ooh. what sold me on it was i'm like well this version this edition is the best way to read these books i'm gonna buy this i i like the anime i've never read the manga but i'm like that that format is so yeah. perfect that i will invest into it so oh, yeah um 
Yeah, and Charlie mentions here real quick, uh, Dark Horse made those nice Zelda books. Um, yeah, like the, the Zelda anime ones, um, the manga ones are... Are those pretty ones good we quality. Have them or different um, ones? Yeah, yeah, no, we, we should have nice, them. Um, are they hardcover? Like what? I think display? I think that they were the soft cover ones, if I'm not mistaken. Or okay. I might be thinking of a different one. Yeah, Charlie, if you could mention the chat. But their quality is just yeah, it's off the charts. Also, Charlie, we might as well ask you because we asked everybody else. Uh, favorite uh, base 151 Pokemon and favorite uh, superhero. Also, I see Christina just just mentioned too. Did I miss the good stuff? Nope, just in time. We were just talking just about talking some new stuff. Now. Um, you know, talking anything exactly. Yeah, just in time for our. I'm here. Mike's here. The good stuff. Is exactly. Here. Yeah, it's all it's all right here. Um, and we'll follow up. Yeah, Christina, favorite uh, base 150 Pokemon and favorite superhero. So, um, but yeah, yeah, like it's it's a bummer. You know, like when you see, kind of, I, I don't know. I mean, this this transfers to a lot of basically every aspect of life like I, I my main thing growing up was video games so like I definitely was there for a lot more of video game industry stuff and it, you know it was always a bummer when you'd see like a triple a game uh, uh, development and production company um, that would make kind of a, a, a shoddy game that cut corners you know not, not the best but then you know like here comes some indie you know upstart you know like I don't know if you're familiar with the Witcher games but Witcher 3 was I made by CD, CD Project Red which was this, um, I believe it was Czechoslovakian or some, some kind of Eastern European, like a small game studio that had like an amazing story, you know, amazing graphics, like like all this stuff put into it, you know, like and they were like showing up all these, you know, uh, you know, like like EA and, and Activision, like all these kind of like, you know, old guard, like huge giants of the industry, you know. So it's just interesting whenever there's somebody who's, you know, kind of the underdog in these situations that just show that like, hey, you know, like putting care and love into the product that you make, uh, definitely is a lot more is a lot more impactful than just you know kind of churning stuff out and trying to you know focus on on the bottom line. Well, so. and good example of me doing like the opposite was yeah. those Dragon Ball books that I bought. Like, yeah, I downgraded from the bigger version because they were a crap year quality. Yeah. Well, I don't care if the pictures are bigger if the damn book falls apart. <laughs> yeah, what exactly. good does that do me? Oh, here, look at this page. It's cool. I gotta go find the other page. It's over there. Mm -hmm. I don't want the covers falling. Dude, wait, yeah. this is really funny. Johnny Secrets. <laughs> um, one time, this is years ago, I was at uh, Half Price Books, and it was when I was collecting those the big Dragon Ball 3 in ones. Sure. And they somebody must have sold the whole set to Half Price Books, and then you know they had the whole set out, and I was like, oh, well, I'm going to buy those. I'll put them on hold. and Oh, because they have a, uh, sometimes they have a sale where like every day during the week, like Monday and Tuesday, it's like 20% off, and okay. then Wednesday's 30 percent so i put them all on hold because it happened to me that week and i'm like oh I'll come back every day and buy one mm -hmm. and when i went back to buy volume three he like all right this will be a better example he like laid the book down on the counter like this and like scanned it you know beep, uh -huh. and then lifted it up and the whole cover just fell off and he's like i'll give you an extra 10 percent off and I was like, I'm not going to buy that book, my friend. I'll take volume four and track down number three. But it was like, dude, that book wasn't even being read and it fell apart. He yeah. lifted it. Like, I get it. It probably had, like, obviously been prior, you know. Exactly, through. yeah, yeah. But half but price so books, half, yeah. just half the book fell off. I guess so. And that's why I was paying half price. <laughs> Although, if you have a coupon on top of that, it's like quarter price books, so I don't know what's well, you'd have to You'd have to tear out a few more pages extra. But, I mean, right there, quality control issue, yeah, it's a bigger book, but I don't care because they're going to fall apart, so I'll take the smaller book. Yeah, so. yeah. Also, so following up on some of the stuff in chat, um, one, uh, Charlie says, Squirtle and Wolverine for favorite 150, favorite superhero. Good choices. Good choices. Um, uh, when he was talking about the, the uh, better quality Dark Horse books, it was yeah. um, the... I don't know if you're familiar with these ones. It was the uh, the Encyclopedia of Hyrule and the Hy the Hylian Guide. It was like oh. these. Um, they're basically like here is a printed. Uh, we have some over there. The printed like big collections of um, the Hyrule like uh, history and like uh, characters and stuff from the books or from the video games rather. Uh, so it was like these like huge like big art books and then you know also had some good story ones. Yeah, like I forgot that Dark Horse did those ones. They, okay. did, they also did that for um, Super Mario. They have a Super Mario encyclopedia. Hey. Um, and then also shout out to uh, Freak Show in the chat. What's up Freak Show? We're, uh, if you got in here we were asking uh, people who came in uh, your favorite base 150 Pokemon, Pokemon and 151. Yeah, exactly. Don't forget. I say that every time. Don't, don't forget. And I, said it, I said it almost every time. Uh, yeah. Mew, don't 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 forget Mew, Mew exactly yeah um and then uh favorite superhero so favorite base Pokemon and, and superhero so 
Did Christina answer? Yeah. Uh, no, she said she did say she was just in time for the secrets, though. So I think it's all, all come Christina for. comes in for the secrets, and then just she see it. Dips out. Pokemon. Peace. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Who cares? Yeah. It's superheroes. Nah. I'm just here for, for the falling falling apart the books. Yeah. Man, I'll have to think of another good one for this night. Um, It'll come up. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Hey. Weird how uh, quality says. Whoa, speaking, speaking of, quality. of quality control, I feel like people who bought these at full price last week are going to be irritated, but I wanted to offer this deal on these books I think are sweet. Joker had an 80th anniversary edition last week, and I'm obsessed with Joker. Like, he's dude's tattooed on my forearm. He's so cool. Um, That's how I know he's cool. Damn right, that's how I know he's cool. He made the cut. That's some prime real estate right there. But he, uh, so they released these decades editions. So there was like 40s all the way through the 2010s. We didn't have a 2010 copy, so this is the 40s through the 2000s, but it's seven issues. It's all the same book, but they all have different covers. But I threw this together. I want to give this to a lucky person. Am I, am I, I was going to say, am I seeing that at, at the right amount? Yeah. Is there another zero that's supposed to be on there, sir? What's going on? No, that'd be an overcharge. A $10? Is that... Yeah, I know it's a little crazy, but I was like, you know, like the people who wanted them got them, and like, it's a really awesome set, and I figured while well, we got them, I'll throw them together, and like, just to incentivize someone to make a purchase. Man, $10. That's $10 American. Uh, as always, yeah. uh, it's usually we have a flat $5 shipping, but again, right. uh, for those of you who are in... Hell yeah! Also, so I get distracted. I saw Freak Show's answer, but um, uh, for those of you who are in who are in the uh, in the neighborhood of Niles, Illinois, or close, um, the store is open again, so we could do curbside. We could do you know walk in and pick it up. So if you want to uh, forego any of the shipping charges, you can come on in and you know get it for a flat ten. And if you come in tomorrow, you can see me. Which is worth ten dollars in it. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. Johnny could hand it to you himself, and also I'll hand to Johnny a copy of the twenty ten one because I think I know where one is, or the twenty two thousand ten. Really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. There's no base cover either, but that's getting oh. crazy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. A little easy there. Yeah. Let's make that an easy twenty. Um. So sorry. I uh, I got distracted because I saw uh, Freak Show's answer uh, was Abra for the Pokemon, and then Deadpool parentheses before he was cool. So uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. Think, I was gonna say I don't think Freak Show. I don't think Freak Show was here when we were talking about uh, classic um, Rob Liefeld kind of generic uh, Deadpool versus the uh, wait, kind wait, of. Wait, wait, wait. There's a rewind button, right? Okay, dude, just go back and rewind, and we'll wait for you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We'll sit here as you we'll listen to like ten minute spiel about Deadpool. So and then let us know what you meant. Johnny's already patiently waiting. But yeah, we were talking. About, <laughs> we were talking about. Did, I'm gonna count back on. Uh, yeah, also Freak Show. I forget. Did, do you are you a fan of? Uh, I don't. I don't think either of those are answers, Christina. Um, uh, are Freak Show? Are you a fan of the Deadpool movies one or two? We're talking about that again. Bam! Who's that fella? It's yeah, his first appearance. You have to read it Deadpool. to find out. Um, Sweet. And with my parents, that was so awkward. Oh I threw boy. That on. And they started saying bad words. I was, and I was like, say no, I'm taking this step in my life. I'm putting are, in a movie with bad words and we're there watching are some it as a family. Adult situations there. Oh, yeah, because then the one, I mean, she said naughty words and my mom was next to me. And I'm like, sorry, mom. I don't know if you know what those words this, mean. This is how superheroes very... talk. Yeah, exactly. This is what all the books that I read are about. <laughs> yeah, right. Um,. Uh, Christina says, "Shup it and arsenic." One, shup it. I don't think was a an original one fifty. And two, I can't even I can't even picture what they look like. I'm gonna. Oops. Let me. Yeah, those both Pokemon. Uh, uh, arsenic. arsenic. I, I. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that as as a character. Shup it. She's school nuts. We're the nerds. Exactly. Yeah. Nerds. Okay. Okay. Shup it was yeah this weird like Kleenex looking one. Um, I'm cool with that. I'll let it slide. Arsenic. The name sounds familiar. It does. I think it's gonna be cool. Uh, Although super. arsenic sounds like fire, so maybe it'll be hot. Arsenic, superhero. Superhero. Um, this isn't what I want. This is just some child who drew. What are you looking the... at, <laughs> Michael? Get that off the work computer. I'm just kidding. There's nothing on there. It's it's a child's drawing of the actual like uh, element of arsenic, and I'm like, that's not a superhero. Um, Freak Show says, uh, first was okay at best, second was trash for the um uh, Deadpool movies. Honestly, I I kind of. That's a cool I opinion to have. I'm not going to agree or disagree. I just think your opinion's cool, and I respect you as a human being. 
I, well, I forget. Were you, were you leaning that way? You weren't that big on the Deadpool movie? Did I forget this whole... Do I have to rewind now and re-listen to the whole conversation that I was an active member of? Yeah, it shows how much you pay attention to me, Michael. <laughs> I'm here for the sales, Johnny. I'm here for the news and the sales. We can, part of the news, dog. We can't, we can't all have our secret sections. That's true. We can all try. Um, do I... The first one... Yeah, it was okay. I just don't like the character that much. I think they did a lot with what they had. I give them full, Yeah, oh yeah, full again, yeah. Especially... Like, said, like having no budget, making like a bajillion dollars mm-hmm. that's cool the second one i've got to see it again to have a real opinion i saw it once yeah um, so i did I'm not see it, it and i don't know if i'm necessarily missing Plus out there, yeah like i can't well i only saw it once and i should say something but there's like some super duper director's cut like edition that i always see it at price books yeah so we don't Shout tell DVDs, out, exactly, okay. yeah. um yeah i would like to watch that and see what's so super duper uncut about it because that might change my opinion would it's no. Because I feel like usually, usually if it was Wait. good enough, it would be in the, in the final cuts. Also, yes, Charlie, here is, I got I got room for, for Deadpool number one right here. What are you talking about, dog? That book will get us money. No, no, the, the movie. Oh, yeah. The book. We, are, we sold, uh, yeah, the uh, we have Deadpool number one from the, what is it, 90, uh, 90 series, 1990, 1994. Johnny? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you it's, it's right behind. Do you want to hold the fort? I could go find it. No, no, no. It's not there. It's behind the counter. Because oh, you're not talking the right series. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go. All right. Let me go. I'll, I'll hold the fort. Thanks, as always, for everybody for coming out here. Uh, talking comics. We got bundles. Johnny, let me grab this one to reiterate. Had an absolute madman. He's going, he's going over my head here, making bundles that shouldn't be. Uh, we've got the... Uh, Joker 80th anniversary special here. We've got uh, the all of the covers except the base one, uh, all of the decade ones uh, for a mere ten dollars American. Uh, now for for reference, uh, you're getting what ten of these? No, one, two, three, four, seven, five, six, more. seven, eight. eight. Eight books that are on their own go for ten dollars each. So buy one book, get seven free, basically. So this is going to be, I think, just a one day only deal. Oh yeah. Um, Flash sale. If you want Joker, we've got it. Uh, Joke's on you, DC. We're getting rid of your books, dog. Uh, yeah, so uh, speaking of Deadpool. Yeah, uh, this is like a 97 series or so. Yeah, yeah. I knew it was some, somewhere in the 90s. Somewhere in the 90s, yeah. There's is Deadpool number the one. Run, though? No, I don't uh, think no, I think it was right Ooh. before. No. Oh, my phone's here. This is my phone. Exactly. How, how am I going to look it up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just have to use my encyclopedic knowledge. Uh, yeah, January. I, I think this one came out in January of 97. Good. Uh, does it happen to say Daniel Way's name on there? No, but it does say January of 97. Okay. Well, I did guess the 97 part before, so that was I a good guess. I think you looked at it, yeah. Okay. But that was before I looked at it. Mm-hmm. I can open it and look, but I have dirty fingers, maybe. Yeah. Well, I don't think I do, but what if I touch this number one issue and then some guy's like, it is, your it is, it is, it is a Marvel comic, so who knows what, uh, what stock they use for the paper, but... Yeah, no, it doesn't say if it's the Daniel Way run. Uh, speaking of other good deals here, the one that I'm always, I'm going to keep pushing until somebody buys it. We've got the anime sampler bundle. Speaking of, of Zelda. Yeah, wait, is that one of the books or no? No, uh, what he's talking about is is a actual, he also mentioned too, there was um, a version of the Zelda book that uh, it came in, it was mocked up to be, do you remember uh, the Zelda gold cartridge for the original Zelda game? No, I didn't buy Zelda. But what did it, was it just a gold cartridge for like a Game Boy? Game Boy? A- NES. Oh, see, I just really offended him. Exactly. That was the dirtiest look he's ever given me in my life. No, I didn't. So there's a gold cartridge? So explain yeah, it, it. So it, it, the it, book looks it, like that? Yes, it looks like the the, the the cartridge that everybody should know if you like video Don't. games. Uh, and also, like it, 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 back then they had like a dust slip case too for, the, um, uh, for those cartridges. Uh... Charlie asked, "Did somebody buy the the Tom Hanks Funko Pop bundle?" No, the people don't people don't want good deals. It seems Charlie, <laughs> that that Tom Hanks bundle is is gold. You're, we're basically giving away pops at that point. Tom Hanks, T Hanks, T Hanks, thanks, thanks, thanks for buying this T Hanks. I think guy. I think I had a joke like that on there too. Did you? Yeah. Cool. It, it was a it was the Tom Hanks bundle. I think I said like at the bottom it was T period H Hanks. So thanks. Um, going back to the anime, we've got. Basically, five anime for the price of four. So for forty dollars, 
You get Galaxium. No, that's not Galaxium one number one. That's Attack on Titan number one. You get Legend of Zelda number one. Twilight Princess. You get Naruto number one. Boruto already out too. In case you want to follow up on that, see what his see what his kid is up to. Uh, Dragon Ball Super number one. That's his son. His name is Boruto. I thought it was his brother. And Galaxium number one, featuring my favorites. Got Hulk Hogan. We got Putin. We got this ghost witch lady. Is that Rasputin on the back? Maybe it is. I think it says Rasputin right there. Yep. So. Dude, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Charlie, that's, he says Galaxium is worth $40 by itself, basically, and I, I tend to agree. Okay, it's also, 40 bucks for it. Then. Uh, uh, right. Side note, I think that I think that Galaxium number one right now is already sold out. Um, I don't think we could uh, actually get any more, so why not why not get it in a sweet bundle? No, that's what we should do. We should say Galaxium is 40 bucks and you get the other Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're free. buying Galaxium, and then I'm, I'm treating you. The rest are my treats. Yeah. Um, you're just paying for it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Except for me. Uh, so yeah, so great, great steals and deals we got here. Um, I, I'd buy stuff, but you don't think who I named is a superhero, says Christina. <laughs> it's not Wait, that, who is it? It's not that I don't think what you named is a superhero. It's at my cursory five-second Googling, uh, all I got was a few JPEGs of children's drawings of the actual element arsenic. Uh, arsenic as a Yeah, unless that was it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah Christina. Have the song Arc Art Simple by Apple Drive. Do you know them? I know. I don't know either of those things that you said. What? Maybe is it a song that maybe if I heard it I'd recognize it, or is this just? No, you just look like a, a Johnny Deep cut. Ah, it wasn't that deep. I'm surprised. Okay, that's cool. You didn't know. If you don't know, you don't know. Yeah, I'm not judging you that much. Just a little. I mean, you're judging me about this. I think as much as uh, uh, I judged you about the um, the Zelda <laughs> gold cartridge. Yeah, that I. I lost like six nerd points right there. Exactly, but I just lost six like cool points. So I think we're probably we like we've we've right like in. evened out again. Nick. Link. Oh, I nice said. See, I'm making references. Like, now. Which which Link? The the hero of time, the hero of Hyrule. You know, Link. Oh. From Zelda. Exactly. The girl that he that that Zelda rescues. Um, Christina says uh, she's from Marvel Runaways. I haven't read Thank nor you. have I seen Arsenic. Girls like Runaway. Uh, let me see. Do, do, do. Arsenic, yeah, the character Arsenic, she says, is is from the character. She's a character from Marvel's Runaways. Well, that's a superhero. I, I have not. Marvel makes superheroes. She, totally they do. Um, I have not uh, read the book, nor have I seen the TV show. So well, that one's yeah, that was a little. Are you referring to the show or the book? I, I assume that they're in both. Yeah. But uh, which one do you like? Just yeah, Christina, are you? Did you read the? Lunk, yes, Charlie. Lunk is my favorite. Is my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> my favorite 151 Pokemon. Wait, did you say? Were you joking when you said that Link saves the or Zelda saves the Golden Age? No, I mean I know that's wrong. You were making a joke, right? Uh, Christina says Gertrude was her actual name. Who makes? Am I confusing things? I think this is all. Arsenic. Uh, Johnny, can you pull out a bundle for me? Let's let's get uh let's get reacclimated. <laughs> Right, Christina says the book. Did you, did you watch oh. the TV show? Are you a fan of the TV? I've heard good things about that, but again, didn't really. I think isn't the comic loosely based in like the X Men universe, or maybe both are. I thought they aren't they like mutants, or am I wrong about that? The Runaways. I think they are mutants. I think they are. That's cool. Um, oh yeah, I made this. I call it a five for five sampler. So there's five random issues of X Force, five random issues of New Mutants, and five random issues of X Factor. Which are like the three, like sister titles to X Men during like the eighties and nineties. Um, That's a lot of books. It is. Um, would it cost me a lot? It would cost you five dollars. Five for five. That's what I mean. It's, it's a. I'm tr we're trying to get rid of some of these here today. That's, so you're telling me there's twenty five books in there? No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Mike's about to. Mike is about to have a blow gas. Yeah. No, there's fifteen books. Alan, in there. he's doing it again. Yeah. No, there's fifteen books in here. <laughs> So okay, yeah. five for five copies of each title. If there's three gotcha, titles. gotcha. Yeah, um, but you know, I'm really trying to get into New Mutants because a lot of people talk it up and like the Bill Sienkiewicz artwork yeah. is yeah, fantastic. And it's written by Chris Claremont for a period and people 
on the internet say it's like on par with Uncanny X-Men, which is supposed to be like the best comic ever. Sure, I think Charlie might have read some of that, so if you could attest to... Uh... Some older <laughs> than Charlie says Gertrude Link Arsenic is, is that. Uh, Christine also mentions that Arsenic is her online name, but her actual name is Gertrude. Uh, I... I don't, I don't. I didn't know we were going by our screen names now too. I didn't know if that counted as as a, uh, as a superhero name. Two ninety six. No, that was my first AOL name. So that's gonna say. I can definitely see that. You know why two ninety six was Cartoon Network on Dark TV back in the day, and that's why I put that as a number. Oh, boy, man! All right, you've you've regained your your nerd points there. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Five for five, man. Because isn't there like a deal at some restaurant that's like five for five? And I was like, we can compete with them. Uh, I think it's um, Domino's. Arby's. No, that's three. We for have five. the meats. Yeah, they have we the We have five the for comics. Five. They've got the meats. We've got the comics. Yeah. Uh, Troy says he's read all of it. Okay, so I was right. You read some of it. All of it includes some of it. It does. Um, did you like it? We'll wait. <laughs> yeah, Christina, yeah, with a with throwback of ASL. Oh Man. yeah. Kids battle. Poor looking, male, Niles. <laughs> looking, I didn't, I didn't know that, that counts. Yeah. Sure, I kind of shaved the other day. I kind of, yeah, exactly, yeah. So I look younger. Uh, what other bundles we got there? Because I know I did made a bunch uh, the last few oh. days. So, any other standouts? Yeah, actually, I just grabbed this randomly, but like, I totally wanted this after I made it. Oh yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah. No, I'm not even kidding. This like, I put this together and was like. Yeah, I what am I? Like in Wolverine comics again. Mm-hmm. So I used to have this whole run, and I sold it like. Um, so this is a Wolverine variety pack from the 1988 series. So they're all issues from that, and it's 15 bucks because these are some pretty awesome books. Um, and I think there's 10 in here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it looks like there's 10 books in here mm-hmm. for 15 bucks. But like, I think. I think I put this one as like seven is the earliest and fifty four is like the latest. So they're all somewhere between seven and fifty four, I think. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, Wolverine Man, like this is like his first series that was ongoing. He had the you know mini series with Frank Miller first. Yes. Yeah. That was his first day. Is ongoing. Yeah, and like I said, dude, I was putting these together and looking at these covers and, and like, God, they're just so sweet. Like the yeah. artwork, I just it's like my favorite era of comic books. Like the colors. It's before it went all digital. It's got Shatterstar. It's got Shatterstar, dude! And Wolverine! You know what I'm pretty sure I threw in here? Oh, I don't know if I'm right or not. Is that Wolverine 50? Maybe it's not in here. Do you guys know Wolverine 50 where it's like the cutout and the die cut cover? And it's like a secret file? Oh, like the, the, the three got, claw like, the marks? Three claw yeah, marks yeah. In it, and then you open it and like the three claw marks are like gapped down the front cover. Mm-hmm. Cool. Charlie, yeah. Charlie says that original uh, Wolverine Frank Miller series is top shelf stuff. Yeah, it is. We've got it on. We've got it on our, our top shelf behind the counter. So you're not wrong. We do, and I eventually want to read that. This I haven't read it yet, but Frank Miller writes some good stuff, and Wolverine's my favorite. Exactly. Superhero. I forget. Did we talk? What was your favorite superhero on uh, Pokemon? Wolverine and Arcanine. Okay, so not close to close to Charlie's of Squirrel and Wolverine. Yeah, kind of actually. One for two. Charlie also knows good animals. I'm looking them in the face. Oh, cool. People are really into this. No, wait. I mean, they're not wait, wrong. People are they're not wrong. That's not what I thought. <laughs> wait, I tried pointing this off last time, but this is the yeah. diversity sampler. So I picked like one. There's 10 books in here or 12. I got to know this stuff ahead of time. I feel like I'm sure. One, two. Only there was room three. on there to, to write. Yeah, there probably was. There's 10 issues in here, and everyone has like a superhero that's not white. So you got like Falcon, which is like a black male. You have uh, Wonder Woman, who's a female. Uh, Miss Marvel is a black female now, correct? Uh, uh, Middle Eastern. Kamala Khan. Oh, okay. Even yeah. cooler. I didn't know that. That's way better. And you know, we talked about this a little bit last time. It was, it was like kind of disheartening when I was putting this together because it was rather hard to find ten yeah. different titles yeah. with not white males. And I was like, wow. It like never hit me that hard until I was like looking for it. So like, good on them for having this diversity, but like it really needs to be upped. Like I'm totally cool with my Captain America being black. I'm totally cool with my Thor being a woman. Like I'm up for that. We've already seen them all be white male dudes. We know that story. You can't retell that story any more than it's already been told. So they need to do more of that. But I like that they're starting. But, but what if this time he had a different shield? 
Would that would that entice you? Wait, what do you mean with that? No, I said I was cool with them having. You want him to have a different shield? No, I'm saying like in, if 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 he was a white dude, but he had a different shield, because that's usually kind of all that they really gave as far as changing. Oh, and changes like yeah, costume exactly, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that was lame. I mean, yeah. But like, also like, there's nothing wrong with having a white superhero and having that be their background. But like, it was just the run of the mill for so yeah. long. Charlie, Charlie, with the good, uh, uh, the good comment that uh, diversity sampler equals X Men. <laughs> just make they make an X Men bundle. Wow, that's actually doesn't get any more diverse than that. Yeah, book. exactly. Yeah. Or a Star Trek one. We have a Star Trek comic. We do. I don't know if it's good or not, but it's an old Marvel series. But Star Trek's really diverse, man. That's why I dig it, man. It's pretty... Man, that old 1968 series is a little rough to watch, but if you just, like, focus on the message, it's, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to say, I, I'm more of a fan of uh, Next Generation, but... Yeah, it's all good. But, yeah, uh, I don't know what we wanted. Five bucks for this or something? Ten bucks? What do you think? Uh, how many did you say was in there? Ten bucks. Ten bucks for ten bucks. Sure. Diversity seems, seems fair to me. Alright. Um. Oh, yeah, and I made this one along with it. Women of. Women yeah, of that's right. I was gonna say, and this you... one's all female led titles. Again, harder to find than it should have been. I was able to yeah. get 10, 10 different ones, but. I see the amazing Mary Jane. I see Wonder Woman. Yeah. Um, I assume Captain Marvel in there, too. Yeah. Trying to think who else. Um, I wish Storm had her own title. Storm is such a badass character yeah. in comics. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. I feel like I haven't seen that much. She's the most badass part. female. She's basically a god. Is yeah. she the most badass female in Marvel comics? She might. Be. Uh, and she's African American. Like you have a, a black female who could be a lead, and she's a badass. They need to run with that man. Yeah. That's the movie yeah. I was gonna say. I feel like I haven't seen that much Storm recently. Oh, uh, how much is that one? Probably ten bucks too. Also ten. One, two, three, uh, Christina, because she said uh, dibs on the women's. You got it. Yours. Put it to the side. Ten dollars. Write Christina on there. Write ten dollars. We'll write Christina right across Wonder Woman. Yep. <laughs> it's not Wonder Woman. It's Christina. Wait, wait, Christina. Do you spell your name C R K R C H R? I used to work at Starbucks, so I had answer. I would ask this question a lot, and it would always flatter people. Do you know that man? I I would hear that more than anything. I'd ask somebody how to spell their name. And they'd be like, you know, nobody asks that. And I'm like, that's crappy. How do you spell it? Or like, if you just guess and you're right, man, Monica, I'd always be like, M-O-N-I-K. And they'd be like, oh, you, how could you know? And I was like, no, your accent. The German Monica in there. Yeah, well, it happened. <laughs> it, it, that did happen once where she was like, how did you know? And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm not going to lie, because your accent, I assumed it was a K. And, but it flattered her, so mm -hmm. that's cool. Oh, I'm flattered. My name is spelled J, J-A-Y. <laughs> how did you know? Uh, it's... We actually had a customer named J at Starbucks came around. You have a really dry cappuccino. For Jay. Say it every day. Every day, make it for Jay. That's right. How do you spell Christina? C R U S T T I N A. Christina. Mm hmm. Cool. Um, also, Charlie asked, is this turning into the Star Trek chat? Yeah, Star Trek is, is uh, it's comic related. There is the. There it is. TNG. Give me up, Scotty. You hit that, and then you, you're, okay, you're chatting. Your transceiver? TOS, the radio series. Is that? Yeah, I guess you're right. That one is. I don't know. That's Kirk's. Captain, well, sorry. But yeah, there's name? there's uh, there's no shortage of, of uh, Star Trek comics. Uh, there's all, yeah, there's the, the classic <laughs> Marvel ones. Um, there's a few, like, not IDW, but uh, now, nowadays it's IDW, they're doing some, but um, there's a bunch of side ones, yes. You know what I really want to watch recently, I've been wanting to watch again, is that new trilogy. Did you watch those? Oh, the, the J.J. Abrams ones? Dude, here's the thing, man. The first two are great, and they're J.J. Abrams. The third one was done by the guy who did Tokyo Drift, and I don't know his name. But going to the theater, I was like, oh, Fast and the Furious movie, that probably sucked. This movie's going to suck. Dude, Star Trek Beyond Star Trek Three is, like, the best of the trilogy, and it might be the best third movie I've ever seen of a series. It's, be it's a better third that's, movie. That's quite a bar. It's a better third movie than The Last Jedi. You want to argue? Uh, Do it in the wait, chat. Last Jedi? That's like the, the third the third Star Wars trilogy one, right? Return of the Jedi. I was going to say, yeah. Jesus Christ. I was going to say, like, Last Jedi, yeah. That's, See that's, what you've done that's, to that's, me, that's, Star Wars? That's, that's, that's a low bar. You've got, you've got to jump. But man, yeah, no, another Return? I, I think Star Maybe. Trek Beyond is a better third movie than Return of the Jedi. Because Return of the Jedi has way too much filler crap. Do you agree? Uh, Charlie says Simon Pegg wrote it. That's why it's the strongest. That is true, and he's a big fan. And he, um, 
Yeah, you went down or whatever. I was gonna go with that. It's also, better. Scotty or not? Yeah. Yeah, but that's good. Yeah, he was a badass. The story checks out. Um. Yeah, I I I only saw the first. Yeah, the first one of the uh, the J.J. Abrams one, and man, it really turned me off because. Really. Uh, yeah, because I mean, like, it wasn't it wasn't uh, the Star Trek that I know, which is like space politics and, and philosophy, and you know, like. Uh, you know, it just basically being like a, a, a morality tale. Um, but it was just ended up being, you know, like here's some lens flare and, and explosions and action. There's which, a lot of lens flare. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, like that's not, that's not really what I come to Star Trek for. Like that's closer to like Star Wars stuff where it's like not as heavy on those, you know, like, uh, you know, deep thoughts and, you know, like, you know, being a morality tale or, you know, an allegory for, you know, whatever social like issues are going on. Uh, so that's, I don't know. When I saw that, I'm like, that's eh, not right for me. I, so I don't think I saw two or three. That's cool. Um, Charlie puts up uh, <laughs> Alien 3, Home Alone 3, Jurassic Park 3. Probably beats all of those. Home Alone 3, how are you going to get left home alone the third time? It was a different kid. And technically, Kevin only got left home alone once because the second time he was lost in New York for the title. So you need to get your facts straight, Jack. Also, that pizza in the first movie, Little Nero's, which it's in Evanston. I don't know if that's a real place, but that pizza looks like <laughs> Evanston. Dog. I don't know if Evanston's a real place. Isn't it? Or is it Will Matt? Where's the house? I know, the... yeah. Um, yeah, I thought it was... Uh, wh- is it Winnetka? It's in one of those. The Home Alone house is in one of those places. Charlie says, uh, they dumbed down sci-fi adventures without uh, yeah, philosophical and moral implications. Uh, they also forgot what the prime directive is. To explore new worlds, to seek out new life and civilizations. It's and, both and go. Not to inter- not to interfere. So, they prefer to like interfere very hard, with like blowing hey man, places I up. I saw those Klingons attacking them. <laughs> they drew first blood. That's right, Star Trek first blood. Oh, that sounds like a cool movie. Uh, yeah. House House and Will Met Christina says, but it's not a real place. Uh, what little Nero's is? I, I guess, yeah. Oh, here. Oh, Charlie says here's a good uh, third movie in a trilogy: Army of Darkness. If you count it as part of the Evil Dead trilogy. Okay. Because Evil Dead One, Evil Dead Two, Evil Dead Three was technically the Army of Darkness. Uh, I'm gonna respectfully disagree because I'm not. I'm not a fan of the campiness of of those movies. I but over there for sure. Yeah. Feel free to take a stroll. Uh, as usual, thanks for everybody for coming on out. Um, we're talking movies. Uh, you know, it's, we're staying late here. We're having our meals. Uh, we're having a good time. Um, thanks always for coming on out. Uh, and again, yeah, we've, we've got the bundles. We've shown off some crazy ones. Um, apparently the Chris, uh, Christina says the pizza is fake. Sorry, dude. Um, you know, we're gonna have to just stick with our, our, uh, what is it? The one that the Zach always gets, uh, Pequods. Pequods. Yes. We'll have to stick with Pequods for our pizzas. Um, the taco Maya for our tacos. I had to go and take the last bite of my chorizo because this is like, Oh, eight hours out. late or eight hours old? Yeah, I didn't eat. I didn't finish earlier, and like out while I'm talking, I'm like, man, I could use some food right now. That that definitely helps. Um, I mean, you made a sale, so we've we've earned it. Yeah, so little Nero's isn't real. Man, that's kind of heartbreaking. It is it though? Yeah. Little Nero, also a comic book. Is it really? Mm-hmm. It's an old an old story. It's like right up there with like uh, Rinton. Wait, did I show off the Hook comic last time? No, you didn't. I think it's still over there. Oh, it's right over I know, there. I know that, yeah, exactly. I put it over there just because I know you had to have it at, at the ready. Man, where is it at the ready? <laughs> it's at the ready. Know. It might have gotten put under the table then. Under the table. Um, but yeah, I think once more, I'm going to have to, oh man. Again, Charlie with the, the hot takes here of the Naked Gun trilogy. Oh, we talked about that together. He's right. He's right. <laughs> uh, so again, one more time. I got I to gotta flash the deal of the century here. Uh, the Joker Decades 80th Anniversary set. We've got 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, 2000s, and 2010. Uh, so we've got, you know, quite a few books here. We've got eight books. Normally it would be $80 uh, for a mere $10. Wait, there would be 80 bucks? Those are $10 each? I believe so. So you might want to pick it up so now before before that. Johnny realizes his mistake. Also, uh, yeah, Charlie also says easy choice is Return of the King, but basically Lord of the Rings is one long movie as it is. So, two towers was better. 
<laughs> Damn it. Christina says dibs on the Joker set. Yeah. We're in. You just got one hell of a deal, Christine. I really messed that exactly. up. So my misstep is your game. Exactly. That's what we're all about here. But missteps and games. Speaking of missteps and games, the other day I was going through our comic That's boxes. That's the biggest and I games. I came across this, which I didn't know existed. The official movie adaptation of Hook. Rufio. 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 Oh! Do you do know they, how they much say I that in there? That no, it's probably too far along. Yeah, this is the first. Yeah, this is book one. Yeah, he went, the, the last page is him waking up in Neverland. I page two. Um, oh, there's Tink, dude. There's Julia Roberts Tink. That doesn't look like Julia Roberts. I was going to say, we, we talked about this. I'm like, oh, yeah. does it look like uh, does uh, look Robin, Robin Williams? Williams. <laughs> that guy looks oh, like man. some guy named Uncle Bill. Hi, I'm Uncle Bill. I'm here to fly. Man. But Hook is so my favorite story that I literally have Hook's Hook from Hook tattooed on my the, arm. The Hook, the, the cane from Citizen Kane is right there. <laughs> yes. I've never seen Citizen Kane. Although I do love that one of the Simpsons Halloween specials with Kang the alien is called mm -hmm. Citizen Kang. That's, yep. That's all I know. It's, it's a good one, yeah. <laughs> so. um, but I was really stoked to find this, man, because I didn't know it existed. It's probably really average, but it's like my favorite story. I love that story, dude. You get to run away and be a kid forever and fly based off your happy thoughts and fight pirates? Mm -hmm. Who, who can, doesn't want to do that? You want to get a job and grow up? No. That's what they didn't want to do. Exactly. They don't want to grow up. They sang a whole song about it. You know, actually, um, that's one of the only plays I ever went to, as well as Peter Pan. I saw live in person as a child. I loved it. I don't. They always have a girl playing Peter Pan in the in the plays. Do you know that? I can't say. I knew way more about Peter Pan than you knew anybody knew. I love that story. It's so cool. And we have a comic book of it. And there it is. Play that for you. Play exactly. Yeah, that's the only only issue one of four. Oh, four. Now. So I got to go through. Oh, dude, and I just even noticed Peter was showing up there. Look at how this. I was here for Halloween a couple years ago. Just don't want to grow up. Hell no, I don't. That's why I'm still yeah, 22 looking. I was, I was, <laughs> 22-ish. Uh, I was, I was bummed because yeah, I, I figured that uh, they didn't have the license or the likeness rights uh, for uh, Robin Williams or the other characters there. So that's why I was like, I want to see is that our boy, R.I.P. Robin Williams? But no, it was not, and that's kind of weird. Um, Whoa, this chair and the chair is gonna fall out. Yeah. It's as if that's, they're not made for that. No. Um, Charlie says, uh, run home, Jack. Run home, Jack. Oh, Charlie! What Dude, the, home what run, the... Jack. <laughs> home run, Jack. Oh, my gosh. Oh, dude, Charles Vesp did Who? this. The name sounds familiar, but I can't I can't place it right now. He, uh, well, he's done a couple covers for Spider-Man, most notably Web of Spider-Man 1 and oh. Amazing Spider-Man 261, and the beautiful thing is they look like paintings. He paints them. Mm -hmm. We have a copy of 261. We don't have Web 1. Um, oh, Charles Vest is a... I was going to say, you might have a, a Vest bundle in the making here. Oh, my God. Right there. See Vest. I can't believe I didn't notice that. Yeah, he's a fantastic artist. Um, that's awesome. See Vest. Um, yeah. So many... That's the, that's the nice thing about going around looking through the back issues here is we just find occasionally just some random that diamonds Bruce in the Lee rough. That Bruce Lee bundle I found? Yeah. Exactly. I, I bought it for my cousin because he's a huge martial arts fanatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, I made that. Yeah, I made that bundle a while ago because yeah, it was yeah. like issues one of of six of some. Uh, I forget who even the, the publishing company was. It was it was something wild. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think like, do you remember when they were doing those weird DC Marvel crossovers and they had like Dark Claw? Yeah, yeah, the Amalgams. Those were the best. Yeah, I have that. I have that Dark Claw first issue. There you go. I, I mean, I don't I don't think that they're like crazy worth money, but it's just more just a thing of like. I, it's just cool. Are we ever going to have that again, Johnny? What? Are we going to have crossovers between Marvel and DC? Is everything too... Uh... I wouldn't touch DC with a 10-foot pole right now. 10-foot pole, good punk band. If you don't know, look them up. 10-foot pole. They have a song called ADD. I, I, think, I think we talk about this. All I know is G.G. Allen. That's the only the only punk pole oh, that I can... Oh, that's right. No, exactly. you say you for the Ramones. I, yeah, well, who doesn't... Like, the the Clash and the Ramones. Like, yeah. if, you, if you, like... How about the Casualties? I, I can't say that I do. How about the Dead, Dead Kennedys I've heard of. Yeah, yeah. you've heard of Dead Kennedys? I, I, hell yeah, you did, because you played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. It's, it's remember, yep, I have, but I can't. I cannot place what, uh, what song that they Oh, did. that's one if it came on, you'd be like, oh, that song. It was the theme for the whole video game. Uh, the only one that I can think of is, is Superman. Oh, my Goldfinger. Exactly, yeah, that's a great song. That's a badass song. Yeah. They did a quarantine video on that during quarantine, where they all recorded from their homes and then meshed it together. It's Sounds awesome. about right, yeah. We talk about everything here. I exactly, that. I was gonna say, yeah, we've we've heard 
Yeah, but why are people cheering anymore? Yeah, well, tell us stuff. Say nerd stuff. Say music stuff. Say nerd stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Tell us your favorite punk band now. Tell us your like, favorite fake pizza place. Is mine's Little Nero's because apparently it's fake. That many? What was? Uh, is Planet Pizza? Yeah, that's a that's a fake pizza place. Sorry, sorry. Exactly. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of other famous uh, fake pizzas. In the Ninja Turtles movie, they order from a oh. place called Domino. Yeah, that's that's not real. But it's certainly not real pizza. If any, it's not real pizza. You're right. That's funny. But if anybody remembers in the VHS, Pizza Hut won the bidding to have their advertisement in the beginning of the movie. Oh wow! And they have this whole commercial where it's like a baseball game. And there's a song. I bet somebody on here knows it. Off in the distance, the game's riding on, and it's this whole thing. And you know, at the end, it's like Pizza Hut, and then the movie starts, and they order Domino's. <laughs> Can't win them all. I guess not. Also, he puts the dominoes. I was always bothered me. I saw him very recently. He slides the dominoes. I worked at a pizza place for a while. You can't tilt it on its side. It's going to slide. And then they open it and it didn't slide. So it's fake. Troy says it's Pizza Planet, Mark. Didn't I say Pizza Planet? What did I say? That's what you said. Yeah. I said Pizza Planet. Yeah. Christina is shook it. Um, yeah. I don't know. What's your favorite Pizza Planet? Real or fake? Real. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't think I'm that picky with pizza. Like, deep dish is good. Sometimes you just want like you know, uh, just like a buy the slicing, like almost like Pacino's. Um, but what did you just say? <laughs> Pacino's? Wait, Pacino's over in yes. Glenview? Yes. Oh my God! You know about Pacino's? I live in Glenview. Yeah. Like it's I I yeah. My neighbor somehow knows their owner and would like occasionally deliver for them. He knows. He knows Mr. Pacino. Yeah. Dude, at the end of the night, when they have all this extra stuff, they just give it to the drivers. And, like, th- my neighbor, like, just randomly, occasionally, throughout my whole life, will just, like, ring our bell at, like, 11 on a Friday night and be like, here's two boxes of pizza. And it's these giant-ass slices. Yeah, yeah, slices. they are, yeah. Because they usually and sell them good. by the slice. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, like, we'll get, like, like, like the, 10 the new... slices of cheese and, like, five of sausage. You're like, we can't even eat this. Yeah, it's like the, the New York style of, yeah, just a huge, thin slice, usually greasy. Uh <laughs> Charlie, you may have to rewind it. He says that I said planet pizza. That does sound like something I would have said instead, but... Instead of pizza. Maybe you did. There's, there's no way of knowing, Charlie. I, I'm sorry. But, um, uh, but yeah. Anything else we got on the docket here? I think that's most of the news. Uh, again, recap being DC and, and Diamond still kind of uh, fighting it out. Um, an update being that uh, we have set up uh, an account to get the, um, uh, the DC book. So, you know. Everybody's fine here. Uh, there might be some rough stuff in the transition of it because uh, the software doesn't speak with that, and you know it's it's all sorts of you know things out of our control. But technical mumbo jumbo. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But saying. but point being that we are not in the the group of of comic uh, shops that have just completely uh, bucked DC. Which again, I get why people oh, would. And DC. exactly. Yeah. That was. Clean. <laughs> it was. Um, but yeah, so so we're still be getting DC Comics. Um, so if you're a subscriber, you know, don't worry about that. You know, it's it's still in the works and we're still fine. But you know, it is a bummer that it has caused such a rift. Um, in some ways, it seems intentional. You know, looking at what AT and T wants to do with uh, with DC and their comics, they definitely want to get away from the monthly books. But you know, there's only so much that we can do. So we're kind of riding with it now and seeing where it goes. Uh, Real quick, in the news update, uh, Charlie says, best than crust, in his opinion, is uh, GGOs and Displains. Uh, okay. Now, that's uh, I haven't heard. Mama Needies. Mama Needies? Yeah. Okay. I am totally game to try both of those, and I will. Just like I watched Neon Genesis, like I told you I mm-hmm. would. You'll, you'll be 26 <laughs> slices of pizza in and be like, yeah, it was all right. <laughs> yeah, and I'll have to go get the four director's cut slices. And there's two movies. You see, it works because you said slice and then cut. Yeah, right, so, I know. You know. Hey, wait, speaking of slicing and cutting and pizza, uh, at home, what I bought when I moved out for myself as my housewarming gift, I got an officially licensed Ninja Turtles pizza cutter, and the handle is like Raphael's like side handle, and then it's got a pizza cutter. I mean, I'll never actually use it. It's for display, but it's super awesome. Officially licensed, huh? <laughs> Yeah, because I don't want to just be like, yo, it's a TMNT pizza cutter. Exactly, also, yeah. you know what they have that I want to get? They have an officially licensed TMNT cheese shredder with the shredder on it. That's that's clever. I, I like that. It doesn't really fit anything, but I, I like the, the, the pun of just shredder and shredder. That's where they got the name. Did they? Yeah. 
I guess, yeah, yeah, because you're making pizza using a shredder. All right, I'm learning stuff today. Oh, and hey, that connection. Do you know the whole thing with, like, that, the connection with uh, Daredevil, though? What about him? Wait, this is some cool comic, like, factual knowledge. Um, so the creators of Ninja Turtles, Eastman and Laird, yeah. were huge fans of the Frank Miller Daredevil run. Okay, so, like, the whole first issue of Ninja Turtles is, like, an ode to that, and... In the first issue, when they're showing the turtle's origin, and the uh, vial of ooze falls down, the vial falls off a truck that some old man walked in front of, and a blind kid pushed out of the ah. way. Then, like, in Daredevil, the ninja group is the hand. Mm-hmm. Then the turtles are go. made at the foot. That yeah. was like an ode to okay. that. And, uh, yeah, the whole the whole original turtle story is like an... Is, even uh, basically in the same universe it is yeah and the first issue is dedicated to frank miller from east oh nice yeah hell yeah we should read that one have you ever read that first art no no i I know that i know that's like you know crazy violent uh uh, you know yeah yeah, eastman i love i love his artwork too like it's it's crazy yes and you know when they did um powers of x1 eastman did a one of the variant and it was a wolverine but it looks like a ninja turtle style we've 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 got one of the the uh eastman I think it was X Men number one though, because it's, it's awesome. not it's not Wolverine, it's some lady. Yeah, I had to get that one up. It was a, another store exclusive. You had to order it from the yeah. store, which whatever it was an exclusive. I can't hate on him for that, but I would love to see that because his artwork. Oh, we should I should make like a Kevin Eastman bundle. That'd be cool. He's there got go. great artwork, and it's held up to date. He still draws Ninja Turtles covers and stuff, and it's awesome. Is there any any famous writer or artist that has last name West? I was going to say we need an East, East meets West bundle. Uh, the first thing that pops to mind is Billy West, the voice actor. With his voice actor. I was going to say Kanye, but that's no. Kanye. Yeah, that's uh, Christina cool. says, uh, both of you have beard shadow and black hoodies. Slow clap. I mean, you've got you've got actual beard shadow. I've just got like, yeah. Yeah, I have man <laughs> facial hair. I hate it. It's not, I'm not even, it's not like a great thing. You know, when I was a kid, I used to be like, I can't wait to shave. And now I shave and four hours later, I look like this and I'm like, what the hell? It's not that cool, man. And like, you go through razors fast. I do have a pretty strong beard line now. It's like, <laughs> you started this, Christina. I'm just finishing it. Um, yeah, we do both have black hoodies. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Me. One was a legit punk one and one is my magic the gathering oh I, I please i work here wait the back patch on this so this is an album cover and i actually have that same image tattooed on my left arm because it's like my favorite album cover but the i bought that it was a t-shirt and i bought the t-shirt and i was wearing it for the first time when i was 17 and i busted my shoulder and i had to go to the hospital i really did mm-hmm. and they were like you can't lift your arm we're gonna have to cut your shirt off and i was like wait I just bought this shirt. Can you cut it at the seam so I can try to resew it? And they were like, "Okay," and like I couldn't resew it. But I was like, "I'll oh, turn it into a back patch." And so that's the story. But yeah, busted my shoulder when I was seventeen. I don't, I don't think I've ever uh, broke a bone. Then again, I, I didn't really do anything. I never sportsman. Never. I skateboarded for like a week because everybody skateboarded after you played uh, Tony Hawk. Um, oh hell yeah, Charlie with a, a very good call. Uh, Herbert West from Reanimator, he says, unfortunately not a real person, but Ooh. I had, man, one of my favorite bundles I ever made was the uh, the Herbert West Reanimator one. We got, like, real deep into it. We uh, faked up a, um, like, a, a doctor's uh, prescription, like, uh, sheet on there, uh, like, and, si- and signed it. And si- <laughs> exactly, yeah, please don't try to redeem that at a Costco or a CVS. Um, but you get this, Mike? Except, yeah, it's, it's a signed by Mike, and it says for, for reanim- reanimation juice. I don't even know if that's a real thing. But, um, uh, but yeah, I'll have to see. We definitely, I think, still have some uh, Herbert West stuff. So, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really work that well thematically, but the fact that it's East meets West, I am all for. So welcome to basically, like, here is, like, our live, almost, like, writer room session of how we come up with bundles. It's usually something just either a bad pun or something silly um but you know i like to just the fact that it's on theme or has a theme i think is more interesting than just here's a couple of random comics so well i agree and then it gives me something fun to look for exactly yeah 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 that's in some ways too like the the hunt is definitely definitely part of it so that's what i love most about this i can understand why a lion enjoys being in the wild it's like when i go to comedy stores it's pretty much the same thrill exactly yeah except i'm not hunting my food you're hunting your entertainment. Yes. 
but it is really fun. That is the best part of comic collecting. Yeah, yeah, and man, once we um start dipping into the uh the the cold storage back issues that we've got in the annex, man, there's gonna be a lot of hunting going on there too. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna come across stuff and be like, oh, I wish we had this, man. Exactly. That's how I react to things. A little little uh, inside baseball. Um, a lot of the, the overstock back issues that we have and stuff from collections that just never really sold, uh, we've got um, basically being ready to be set up as part of a hopefully welcome back, you know, I think when things finally open up again, uh, we're going to have a like a kind of huge sale on basically all comics over there will be like a flat $2, one or $2. So, uh, It'll be fun. I'd love to have people in the store again. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a bummer that there's not that many people out. Obviously, our industry, uh, between the comic side, it's a lot of it. It's just like the week to week. All right, you know, Wednesday and Thursday, we have our comic subscribers come in, pick up their boxes, and kind of, you know, all right, see you next week. Uh, and then the event uh, crowd. Without any events, it means you know not really coming here to play Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, anything like that. But and we have an overabundance of snacks now because they're not buying all the snacks. Well, somebody's got to eat those snacks, Johnny. Yeah, I can help them as much as I can. <laughs> Actually, today I did well. I just had one of those peanut butter valley, nut valley things or whatever they are. Pretty good. Yeah. Favorite favorite snack, Johnny? Rice Krispie Treats. That's a good answer. I know. <laughs> I know. That's why I said it. I only like good answers. Uh, what's your favorite snack? I don't know if I have one. Yes, you do. Uh, I don't know. I've been trying to get off a lot of like sugary stuff, so maybe trail mix. I've been getting into that again. No, I say what's your Make... favorite, not what's going to give you six-pack abs. <laughs> I don't know if it's even doing that, man. Um, I, yeah, I, I lean, I lean heavy, and in, in my DIY trail mix uh, snacks, I definitely do lean heavy on the uh, M&M side of it. Um, I put, yeah. I, I put in uh, dried um, pineapple slices, pineapple rings. Oh, dried fruit's fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Um, Christina says uh, her immune system is too weak for crowds. We'll come for snacks and snacks only. We definitely got snacks. Yeah. It's only a dollar. Any All snack snacks. for the most part. Dollar, I think I think the uh, the pocky is a little bit more expensive, but yeah, that's pocky. I mean that's that's that's, that's a, yeah, exactly Japan. imported from yeah from the from Japan. You know, best go. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, come by, buy snacks and yeah. Fortunately, we are still so, that you got for your yeah deal. snacks and snacks, baby. Um, again, as always, uh, weekdays uh, we are open from noon until eight p.m. Uh, weekends it is from eleven until six. Um, curbside is still an option for those of you, you know, if your immune system is too weak to come in, we could definitely still run out to your car with gloves and masks. Um, <laughs> thank you, Charlie. Um, and then... The Charlie snack. Quoting uh, uh, Scarface, he says, where'd you get that scar, tough guy? Eating pineapple? Oh, scar made sure I was talking about. Did you get it from eating pineapple? Something like that. That's Charlie. <laughs> We know what you're doing. Thanks for keeping it PG, man. The P and PG stands for pineapple. Mike's off screen laughing. I think he's going to bust the spleen. Uh, that's how I got my scar. Oh, um, that was so cool. It wasn't, but thank you. Um, I thought it was a good full circle. Uh, any other, uh, anything else on the docket, either news or bundle related that you want to show off? Or a bundle of news that you want to have? I don't know, you put me on the spot like I'm, no, I don't know. Exactly, I, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Comics Corner. Uh, yes. Oh, if you want to show off real quick, uh, the, the Kirby okay. one. The Kirby, uh, it's, it's the box, top right. Oh, I thought you were talking like Jack Kirby, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Your favorite. Yeah, Kirby. There, yep, that's there it box. is, that's, yep, that's the one, look at him. Look at him. I ordered two of these, definitely didn't order one of these for myself. Um, is it cake? No. It's, I mean, he's, yes, he's on cake, but it's not actual fork. cake. Just come with a fork? Oh, it's my band Presto. They make good stuff, yeah. good quality. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why I ordered Look at that cute guy. Kirby, definitely, probably one of my favorite video game characters, if not the favorite video game character. He was one of the first video game characters that I ever had. Um, cool. That I ever had. That's not what you say. Uh, it was the first video game that I ever had. Um, so I think that there's definitely the nostalgia to it. But also, look at him. He's a cute little guy. He sits on cakes. He eats tomatoes. I'm not a fan of tomatoes, so that that part, you know, sorry Kirby, we have to part ways there. But more tomatoes for you. Yeah, exactly. I guess. <laughs> Weird. Sitting on stacks of chairs causes the chairs to collapse at times. It was entertaining for the people. It kind of 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It gets, gets your heart going right before we sign off here. Um, but yeah, I think that that might be everything then, right, Johnny? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That Dark Knight's Metal comes out tomorrow. That was probably the biggest deal there. Yep. DC's going to be in Europe. We're buying from Lunar. And of course, Little of course Heroes isn't real. Heart exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all the, uh, the hits. And then also uh, the Hook uh, four part miniseries. Not licensed characters. That is not. For the Hulk. That is, that is not uh, Robin Williams in there. So. You've lost your marbles. It's a line from the movie. Um, wait, tomorrow I'll see you to talk Berserk. I'm Whoa, okay. Christina speaking. Uh, uh, speaking uh, blasphemy here. She says she low key hate Kirby. Reminds me of when all the crazy girls in high school loved Gur. They're not even. They're not even the same thing. <laughs> I, I have to fight this. <laughs> also. <laughs> are you Johnny? Are you one of those crazy girls? No, actually, I'm gonna tell you a fact about that. Um, Johnny's Secrets Part Four. I was gonna say, yeah, we're we're deep into them today. So, have I mentioned on here that I used to work at Hot Topic? I think I did, right? Yeah. So, I loved Invader Zim when it first came out on Nickelodeon. Like, I loved it as a kid. I thought it was a great show. I had a bootleg version I got off of eBay before they were ever like officially licensed. Fair. And. Okay, that's my like association with Invader Zim. And then one day I'm working at Hot Topic, and I'll never forget this. We had a bunch of Invader Zim shirts, and this little girl was like, "Can I get that shirt?" And I was like, "Oh, we're sold out of that one, but we have this one with Zim on it." And she goes, "Who's Zim?" And I Who's was the like, "Invader." Oh my God! You all think that Gur is like a Hello Kitty thing. Yeah. You don't know that it's from anything. You don't know it's from a TV show. You don't exactly, know there's yeah. other characters. You think it's Hello Kitty. And so I got this tattooed on me as like a, I used to love it. And then after I did, I was like, man, Christina's this right. All these high school girls love this crap. And now I got it tattooed on my freaking arm. And it's just not, it's not as cool as I thought it was. So. I, I think, I think Royce would also have a, like to have a word with you too. As she was, as she was reading uh, her, uh, her Invader Zim comic. Yeah, I'm not talking about on the show. I it's that the, the I'm saying Christina. I'm saying Christina was though. I'm saying Yeah. Yeah. But that's okay, you don't have to like it, but just Gur used to be cool, man. Before all the high schoolers got to him. Also awesome. like my chemical romance. Yeah. Uh Christina says, Oh no, not not hot topic. Oh no, baby, what is he doing? What's wrong with H T? That was the one of the HT. Best. Ooh, there's a problem right there. I've, the I've never heard of it referred for. to as you know that. What I, wait, the, was that the story I told? I'm not making this up. When I go in there to shop regularly, this has happened multiple times. I'll be in there shopping and someone will come up to me and be like, hey, can you help me? And I'm like, I don't work here. I just look like I work here. I have dyed hair. Oh, well, to be, and to be fair, you did used to work there, so maybe you've got the... You've I got, did, so one time I did. You've got the, the, you've got the smell of HT, so they they could they, they, they knew know. that you worked there. I'm like a meat thrown to the dogs. Yeah, man, you gotta have a job. You gotta pay your bills. HT was hiring, and they were like, "You could have your nose ring." And I was eighteen. I was like, "Yeah, man. exactly. Yeah, that's that's true." Yeah, you mean I could have my Gur tattoo for this? Sure. Yeah, you encourage this, and dude, you'll you'll, you'll pay for my Gur tattoo. They kind of did. Yeah, I like working there. They taught me uh, how to fold shirts. Still fold shirts the same way I learned there. Exactly. Yeah. First day, my boss was like, "You'll never fold a shirt another way again." I was like, "You're wrong." And then twelve years later, I'm like. I might I might need your help with that because I well I don't really I have I have my shirts on a hanger in the closet so your t-shirts yeah that's awesome I think that's so cool is it yeah I think so I think it's I think it wastes it's a like lot of space but that's very cartoon I've got I've got to go through my yeah like I've I I just need like two shirts I think I'm good with that I feel like I've got to go through and like clean out my closet a lot I really want to just have all black t-shirts and then all Batman logo t-shirts so that it's like you either see me in one or the other and you're like, you're always wearing the same shirt. It's like, no, it's not. Kind of. Yeah, kind of exactly. Yeah. Like, that's where I'm at, too. I think I just need, like, it's a few a few undershirts. I need I need my, my staff hoodie and then, like, green pants, and I'm good. You do rock green pants. They're good. Awesome. Yeah. Freaking awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, another great uh, comic corner uh, here with Mike and Johnny. Uh, talking sales, making sales, making deals. We're, 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 no, to be fair, we're a PG show, so that means that we get one. Or a PG-13, so we get one. Johnny just wanted to save just it till right at the end. You know what the first movie I ever, the first PG-13 movie I ever saw that had the F word in it was Little Nicky. There's only one in there? Yeah. That's only PG-13? Popeye's chicken is an awesome. 
I could there's, say there's some that, bad yeah. stuff with Hitler in there too. I don't know. Man. I oh, like you could, yeah, I was gonna say. How do you get that scar, get... Johnny? Yes. <laughs> Came full circle. Well, see you tomorrow. We'll be here at eight o'clock. Uh, we will be in the store. I'll be in at four. What time will you be in? Noon. All right. That's personal information, Johnny. Uh, also, one thing that you did mention that <laughs> one thing they did mention too um, that you alluded to was um, uh, tomorrow we will be talking about uh, Berserk. Uh, so our week's uh, comic book uh, corner book club book was uh, Berserk, uh, specifically uh, the deluxe edition number one, which collects books one, two, and three of Berserk. So if you read books one, two, and three, you'll be all caught up to where we're at. We're gonna be chatting more manga, and you know, not to you know spoil it, but it's good. It's a good anime. Yeah, spoiling anything. Exactly. Yeah, well, maybe we'll talk about how good it is tomorrow. So feel free to hop back in again, um, 8 p.m. till, you know, we usually go about two hours. Man, Junji Ito, we went two and a half hours. That one was just... Uh, yeah, we could have kept going, too. Man, definitely, we'll definitely be dipping. I'm sure come Halloween, we'll dip back into uh, some more horror manga for that. But, um, uh, but yeah, Berserk, very nice. And if you want to hear our recap and review of it, tune in tomorrow at 8 p.m. and we'll be back talking about that. Um, and, yeah, as always, thanks, everybody, for coming on out. Uh, we'll see you uh, tomorrow. And I hope you have a good rest of your day.